everyone and welcome to my third episode of drawing fur texture today i'm going to teach you some techniques for drawing different types of animals fur with graphite pencils and i'll only be using three shades in this video which are h or hb b or 2b and a 6b pencil so it is perfect for beginners these five fur types are more common or regular fur types that you see a lot in pet portraits, mostly dogs and cats. And I didn't actually include wild animals fur in this tutorial. And if you want to watch the tutorial on drawing the fox, check the link above, please. I start this first sample with an H or HP pencil. As you can see, I start drawing short and curved lines from the upper part in some areas. The movement of my pencil starts from the left and moves to the right and slightly down. And for some areas, I reverse the movement of my pencil and I start the stroke from the bottom and curve it upwards. This is an example of relatively short fur, which I draw the lines somehow close to each other to create a uniform layer. But I still make sure not to cover all the empty spaces. So as I said, I guide the direction of the lines from the top right to the bottom and left. I try to fill the corners of the circle so that those parts don't look bold or hairless. So according to my reference photo, I start drawing lines in the direction of hair growth. It is very important to pay attention to the growth of the hair strands, their direction changes, their twisting and the places where the hair strands meet and intersect so that your drawing gives the impression of real fur to the viewer. Meanwhile, I can also erase these guidelines perfectly when I'm blending my strokes here and fade them. This first stage requires patience and it has a great impact on the next stages of your drawing. Because to draw a real fur effect, we need to have a layering as a base and put the lines close together patiently. The lines I drew in the lower part are less curved than the higher ones. After finishing the first layer, again with the same pencil, I apply another layer and this time I want to show the places where there's more shadow and darkness or where there is more density of hair in that area. I do this a little faster and just shade a bit on these parts. In the next step, I'll take the B pencil and draw the next layer. The tip of the pencil should be sharp because in this step we need clear, blunt and more defined lines. I create clumps of hair by connecting individual and separate lines together. For this I usually create lines like this in the middle of the hair strands and make them darker in the middle. When you're working with this darker pencil, increase the pressure of your hand on the pencil just a little bit, not too much. By creating more contrast between the bright areas and darkening the shadow sides, you can give the fur a shiny effect and perfectly show the light reflection on the fur. As you can see, I did not shade all the parts uniformly and I still put more emphasis on the parts that I had darkened in the previous step. And then I only adjust the lighter parts somehow since I don't want too much difference between dark and light in my drawing. Of course, eventually all these hairs will be darker than what they look like now. You can use a blending stump or a round brush and smooth the layers a little and make the lines softer to get a more consistent texture. Grab the same pencil again and continue the process. Don't forget to sharpen your pencil regularly. In such drawings where details are very important, a soft pencil with a round tip is not very useful. With my kneaded eraser, I want to make this upper part a little lighter because I think I made it too dark here since the light is shining from this side so it is natural that this part should be drawn with less detail. And to draw the darkest values I usually use 6B pencil with a sharp top of course to increase the contrast of the drawing and intensify the darkness of the shadows. But I also do this by drawing fine hairs not just shading. If you like you can create some highlights on the fur with neat eraser to make it look more shiny. And in the last step, we'll find the lines again with your sharp HP pencil and work a little bit on the details of your drawing. Okay. 
Let's move on to the second example. For this verb, we have curly hair, and the first thing I do is to draw the initial sketch because I need to draw the hair strands separately and specify their placement. So again, I take the HP pencil and very softly, I draw curved lines from top to the bottom. As expected, these strands of hair should be wider at the top and gradually become thinner as they reach the bottom. Don't mind that darker spot, I just wanted to rush on shading, but it's fine. After this step, you start shading with the same HP pencil. Usually the parts between the two hair clumps include the darkest points. Because usually in this case, an upper hair clump is placed on the lower layers of hair. I shade each strand of hair separately and draw curved lines in such a way that it takes the shape of the same strand of hair and in this way I can feel these shapes. I randomly define the lines and make the borders between them bolder. Now, after darkening the hairs and the lower layers, I start to shade the upper hair clumps by creating thin and smooth lines. These shadows should have a lighter value than the previous ones. I may not feel all parts of a strand of hair. I leave some parts empty so that I can give it a shiny effect in the next step. I fill in the places that I missed in the previous step and I'm still putting the initial layer of my work with the HP pencil so that I can cover the surface of the paper to some extent. If you made a mistake and were not too satisfied with the shadows and your initial sketch, this stage is the best time to correct your design because in the next levels, we will go for darker pencils as usual. We can also draw a series of bolder strands of hair on the top hair clumps and enhance the details of the drawing. Then, just like the previous example, we can take the B pencil and darken the shadows we created in the previous step. We should also increase the pressure of our hand in this step just a little to enhance the contrast. Don't forget to sharpen the tip of your pencil regularly. For this type of drawing, which requires a sharp pencil, instead of using a pencil sharpener all the time, I use sandpaper so that I don't have to sharpen my pencil again and again. Then try to blend your shadows with a round brush to make them softer and more uniform. Take your kneaded eraser and drag it on the highlight areas to make them pop. This gives the fur a shiny effect. Well, let's go to the next example. Take your kneaded eraser and drag it on the highlight areas to make them pop. This gives the fur a shiny effect. Well, let's go to the next example. So far, we drew a sample of short fur and we also had a curly fur. Let's go for a long and a straighter fur. This type of fur can be found in some species of dogs, especially breeds with longer fur. Again, like the previous steps for the initial layer, we use HP pencil and create an initial base layer to continue our work until the surface of the paper is somewhat covered. You should also follow the points I mentioned in the previous steps here. I need to lower my sketchbook a little to have a better grip on the paper. In this example, I draw the initial sketch and the direction and flow of the fur. If you have a reference photo, it can be very helpful for you to take an example from it and determine the direction of the hair according to your photo. Put a tissue or a piece of paper under your hand so that the previous drawings you drew don't get smeared. 
do the shadow mapping with the same pencil. So what is shadow mapping? It's the first thing we do when we are in the stage of sketching and drawing the initial lines. It's like a map of shadows so that later we know where is going to be darker and where is going to be lighter. For me, this method is very helpful and it's actually a good guide for my drawings. Shadow mapping can be done in different ways, which we talked about in the previous videos. Start creating strokes in the proper direction you've determined. Your lines should not be too straight or too curved. I still keep the tip of my pencil sharp with the sandpaper so that I can create a good texture. The subtlety of the work is very important and helps to make the work look clean and uniform. As you can see, I kept some parts lighter to create contrast. And as I said before, it is necessary to create contrast in the hair because most hair, especially straight ones, has a shiny effect due to the hair's natural oil. I separate the hair clumps by darkening some parts and defining the borders. In the lower parts, the darkness usually starts from the right, and as it goes to the left, it gets a little brighter. With the same pencil, I continue to create some darker strokes between the strands of hair. And then in the next step, according to the previous method, I darken the shadows with a sharp B pencil. We can make the shadows softer with a brush to make them more uniform. Try not to brush all the parts because the shiny parts of the hair will be very dull. Continue with the same pencil again. And then with the 6B pencil, Increase the contrast of the drawing and refine the shadows. The strand of hair on the left is darker than the strand of the hair in the middle. Finally, take a thinner pencil like HB and add more details to the drawing. This time, I use the mechanical pencil. I switch between my mechanical pencil and 6B pencil to do the final touches. Make the highlights bolder with the eraser to increase the contrast. The next drawing is part of a cat's cheek. The process and steps of doing the work are exactly the same as before. With a light pencil such as Edge or HB, I draw the initial sketch and lines. These darker spots can be darker colors that we see in cat fur.
And then with a B pencil, I start to draw the second layer on my drawing. I make these corners a little darker. I sharpen my pencil with sandpaper and emphasize more on the areas that are darker. I take the HP pencil again and fill in the bright parts, but I don't cover all the empty spaces. The hair in these parts should be drawn with less density and more dispersion. Of course, on the body of an animal, we do not have less hair density on lighter hair. And this only applies to drawing because only in this way we can show that these parts are lighter. We can blend some parts again with a round brush so that the border between dark and light is not too sharp and blends well. Again draw another layer with a 2B or a B pencil on the darker parts to give it more contrast. And then finally, we use the 6B pencil to intensify the darkness and shadows. At this stage, you can also use a brush for some parts. But as I said, don't brush all the parts so that your highlights don't look too dull. Take the HP pencil again and do the details and final touches. And then use the eraser and draw some whiskers for this part of the cat's fur. The cat's whiskers are white, so remove a relatively curved line from the drawing with the eraser. You can also do this with a cutted regular eraser. The next sample, which is the last one, can be a part of the muzzle of a wolf or a dog from profile. The steps of drawing this work are exactly like the previous examples. First, with HP or edge pencil, we mark the initial designs and lines and the location of darker and lighter hair. Then a step by step, we add more layers to our drawing and gradually choose darker pencils. First of all, edge or HP pencils for the initial layers, then B or 2B pencils for the middle layers, and finally we use the 6B pencil for the darkest values.
In the rest of the video, I draw this little stripped squirrel, but this is just a time-lapse video. If you like, you can watch the continuation of the video and the process of drawing this little guy.
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and find it useful. See you in the next tutorial.